regular people are taking their knowledge and content, packaging it up in an online course, and they're making a living doing it. But not everyone is successful with online courses. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And I'm here to help course creators actually succeed with online courses. Hi, I'm Jacques Hopkins, and this is The Online Course Show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Online Course Show. Or hey, if this is your first episode, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Look, I started this podcast about six years ago. Nobody was listening, and we're still going strong. That's because you're out there listening, and new people are finding the podcast, and I'm so grateful for both of those groups. Keep sharing this with people you know that you know that they could find value out of a podcast like this. Here we talk about how to run an online course business, a successful, profitable, impactful, and freedom-giving online course business, and that's what we're talking about today as well. I've got a guest coming on you'll hear from shortly. Her name is T. Tila Cunningham, and she runs the website everytuesday.com. Now, think for a minute. What would be the niche of somebody running a website called everytuesday.com? Well, you can stop thinking about it because you will not guess based on the name alone. On the podcast, I'm often talking about all the different pieces and components you need to have a profitable online course business and the order we put them in and all that. Well, one of those things is we need to build an audience. We need to have traffic. And one of the most effective ways to do that is through content marketing, where we're consistently putting out valuable content that people can consume and think, oh my goodness, if their free stuff is this good, how amazing is their paid stuff going to be? Well, often people struggle with that consistency piece and Tila, many years ago, knew how important the consistency piece was and how much she needed to be held accountable to that, that she built it right into her brand name. And so that's how her brand name came to be everytuesday.com, even though her brand is about graphic design and calligraphy and font making. It's because every Tuesday she puts out a new piece of content. How amazing is that? And she has been doing that ever since she started back in like 2014 every Tuesday, new content from Tila that's free, that's valuable. How amazing is that? Now, she is currently doing a lot of launches. She launches two or three times a year. And the amazing thing is that every time she launches, she's doing six figures in sales. And so we talk certainly a lot about that. Uh, We talked about how important it was for her to quit her job. She had, she was in one of those situations where she hated her job. She was making no impact. She wasn't fulfilling because she wasn't being recognized for the work she was doing. She couldn't see the impact she was having on anybody. And fast forward today, and she's impacting so many people with her courses and her free content. And it's just, it's a, it's a much more fulfilling life. She gets into some amazing things she's been able to do with her life for herself, her husband, her daughter. And now that she's got this successful online course business, a lot of great content here in this interview. You know, I'm the host, I'm biased, but trust me. Okay. You're here listening. I promise it's good content. Before we get into that full conversation, let me tell you about Kajabi. Kajabi is the software that I use today to run my entire online course business. And that is the reason that I love it so much is because it is what I would say is the gold standard today in 2023 for running as many components of your online course business as possible. Hosting your course or membership, whatever your product is, having your landing pages, your website, a podcast if you have it, can all be inside of Kajabi in one place. I'm a loyal person, right? You probably know that if you've been listening to this for a while, but I'm not loyal to a fault. And if something stops being the best thing that I can use, then I will switch to whatever that best thing is. I have not been using Kajabi forever, but at a certain point, I felt like it was the best place to run an entire course business. And I moved both of my course businesses to it and it has been amazing. And so if you have an online course business and you're not on Kajabi, I recommend you at least try it out. If you haven't started yet and you're just getting into it, start with Kajabi and don't look back. And so in either case, there is no better offer to take advantage of than what I'm about to present to you. By going to the link I'm about to share with you, you can get two amazing things you won't find anywhere else, okay? So first of all, you'll get a double free trial of Kajabi. You'll be able to try it out for free for 30 days at the link I'm gonna share. Secondly, you're gonna get a full course 
on how to build your course business inside of Kajabi. Because what I've noticed is people are like, okay, Jacques, sounds great. I'm going to sign up for Kajabi. They sign up. They've got their free trial. And it's like, uh, I don't know how to do anything inside of Kajabi yet. So I built an entire course just for that case where I show you every click and every keystroke that I made building my online course business. I basically recorded my process of building my online course business inside of Kajabi so that you could follow along and do the same. So I've got your free trial covered and I've got your training covered on how to use the software. Like I said, no better offer than that if you want to try it out. So that link is everyclickkajabi.com to take advantage of that special offer. Once again, it's everyclickkajabi.com. Really long free trial and my course on how to use it. Check it out, everyclickkajabi.com. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into that full conversation with myself and Tila from everytuesday.com. Hi, Tila. Welcome to the Online Course Show. Hi, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So you've had your business for, for several years now. Um, when you start, when did you start it and did you start with courses in mind when you when you were starting the business? I didn't. I started with a YouTube channel back in 2014. I think I published my first video January of 2014. And then a little while that started taking off and then Skillshare approached me. And I thought it was actually an automated message because it didn't seem very personal. So then they emailed me again and I, I ignored it again. And then they emailed me a third time and that email, I was like, oh, I think this is an actual person. So then I replied to her and then she kind of got me started. And I had never thought of doing a, an entire course before. I was just having fun doing tutorials on YouTube. So I published my first course there and then I actually started making money off of courses and then everything kind of snowballed after that. So that's how the journey began. So if courses weren't on your radar when you started, what was on your yeah. radar? What, what, what were your goals? Uh, so I, I didn't like my job and I was looking for a way out and I wasn't sure what that would look like. I knew as a graphic designer, I didn't want to freelance. That was just not something I was interested in. But I had worked for a startup toy company and I was like, well, if these guys can make it, I can definitely make it. But I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And I knew that I didn't want to freelance. So I was just kind of testing the waters. I was selling digital products and that would cover like a utility bill every month, but it wasn't going to allow me to quit. So I was deeply unhappy at my job. Uh, so I was just, I guess, trying to put my work out there or having an outlet where I could create the artwork that I wanted to make that I wasn't allowed to make at my full-time job. So I had um, a coworker because I was really familiar with the Adobe suite. I had a coworker that always asked me how to do things. So finally she was just like, you just need to make a video so I don't have to keep asking you how to do this thing. So I told my then boyfriend, now husband about it and he bought me a USB mic for Christmas that year. So that's when I recorded my first YouTube video and everyone was like, really nice to me on YouTube. So it encouraged me to keep going. And yeah, everything kind of evolved after that. Wow. Did you did you say that you were selling digital products before you launched the YouTube channel though? Yeah, I started I so there's a place called Graphic River owned by Envato. Um, and I started selling like digital invitation templates on there back in 2009. So that was my first like exposure to selling digital products online. So it's been a long time selling digital products. Does I'm not familiar with that platform. Like, did mm -hmm. you have your own own audience in any way? Like, do you have followers? Did you build an email list? Yeah. So Graphic River um, preceded Creative Market. If you're, I'm sure you're probably mm -hmm. familiar with Creative Market. Yes. So Graphic River was like the place to go for graphic assets before Creative Market existed. So I, they had a gigantic um, audience and a huge platform. They actually had like written tutorials. So I wrote some tutorials for them, but I, I got sick of that pretty quickly because I was like, I can accomplish this and communicate these ideas much quicker if I just did a video instead of writing all the steps out with screenshots. So I had done a, they commissioned me to do a few tutorial, like written tutorials that way. So that was my first exposure into like teaching how to do graphic design. And I was selling on their platform and they had so many people like creative market, you're exposed to a large audience pe of people interested in your style of digital products. So I kind of, I started to grow a little bit of a following there before I, I went into anything else. 
So technically speaking, the business started in 2009. So you've been doing this almost 15 years now. I mean, I guess you now. could say that. Yeah. It's been yeah, a, like you said, it wasn't making, you know, significant money uh, for, for a while. So, you know, graphic design is a, a, a very broad niche, right? And one thing we talk about here is, you know, trying to niche down. You don't want to go too, too far. We need to have some kind right. of audience, but we need to niche down uh, to some level. So when you were going to create the YouTube channel, were you mm -hmm. thinking just graphic design or did you know what your specific niche was going to be? So I... I've known that I like Adobe Illustrator has always come really easily to me and I'm very fascinated about how to combine different workflows and tools together. Like I'll have an idea of how to do something and I can immediately put together the tools I need to get me to my outcome. Um, and I didn't think it was very special until people would ask me how I did stuff and then I would explain it and I'd be like, I never thought that I could do that that way. So that's how I started realizing, okay, my knowledge of Adobe Illustrator, I could begin sharing and helping other people who might hit these stopping points when they're trying to create something or they're like, I don't think it can be done. So that that was kind of where I focused at first. Um, I love Photoshop as well. So Illustrator and Photoshop are kind of like my go-to, but Illustrator more than Photoshop. So when I, when I look at your stuff today, I, I think calligraphy. Is that what your <laughs> niche is today or is that just one piece of it? it? It's definitely a piece of it. I've always really loved hand lettering. And when hand lettered fonts started becoming popular, especially on creative market, I was like, oh my gosh, this is marrying the two things that I love most is hand lettering and graphic design. So I taught myself how to create fonts and cell fonts. And that's when like my digital products really skyrocketed after that. And that's where my big course journey took off because I made a course on font making, which is to date our most successful and best selling course. Oh, on font making. So people can go take your course and make their own font to, they learn how to sell that font. Yeah, they learn how to convert their hand lettering into a working sellable font. So I teach them the marketing side, how to sell it, how to get it on the computer, clean it up in Illustrator, program it into the font making software, export it, package it up, do mock-ups, get your description written and uh, sell it on different marketplaces. Okay, so when so um, Skillshare comes to you, you ignore their email a couple of times, um, <laughs> yep. but that was your first time getting into courses. Um, what happened next as far as courses go? Did eventually, I guess you, you came off of Skillshare and made your courses on your own platform? Yeah. So Skillshare, um, I joined Skillshare in their early days. So at first they would pay based on how many people took your class, but then a lot of people were doing clickbaity classes that didn't have any substance. So they knew that they had to change their model. So then they started paying per minute. So however many minutes your course was watched, you got paid like five to seven cents at the time for that. So that was a little bit better. Um, but I was having requests for certain courses and all of my courses were deep dive courses because that's what I liked doing most. Like I didn't want to do, at the time they were kind of getting course creators to make like a 10 to 20 minute class. And I was like, I'm not made for 10 to 20 minutes. That's like my tutorials. <laughs> like I'm already <laughs> doing that for free on YouTube. I'm not going to make a course like that. And I soon realized that Skillshare wasn't, the right place for me to, to create those deep dive courses. And I realized that like when I'm creating a course on Skillshare, because I'm tapping into their audience, they're always going to make more off of my work than I'm going to make off of my work. So that's when we started pursuing self-hosted courses through Teachable. Through Teachable. What, at mm -hmm. what point in this did, were you able to quit your job? Um, so I started teaching courses, I want to say early 2015. And I quit my job in September of 2015. So it was but the I courses had, that did it. Yes, it was. It was definitely awesome. like our, that's the foundation of our entire business. But um, yeah, I started doing YouTube in 2014, January 2014, with no plan in mind. I would do the video. I would post a blog post about it and embed the video on our website. And then just kind of see what would happen. I had no intention, like I had hoped that something would come of it, but I never like started a YouTube channel with the intention of like, this is going to be my my business someday. I just wanted like 
I wanted someone to appreciate the artwork I was doing because I was so down at my job. I felt like my art director wasn't giving me the projects I wanted, never picked my work for the projects that I was on. So I started questioning myself as a designer, but I like I still had it inside me. Like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. I want someone to at least see my artwork and I wanted to explore my style more. So this gave me an outlet to do that. Yeah. So that's I want to I want to to dive in there a little bit because you know, a lot, a lot of people listening to this are working a full-time job and they want to get out of it. Um, and so it sounds like you were in not a great situation. You want to be appreciated for what you're doing. You want people to see, see your work. And so another path would be to get another job and try to find a place to work inside of that does appreciate you and does allow you to highlight your work and so on. So for you, why, why were you drawn toward, I guess, entrepreneurship versus just trying to find another job because I truly believe, you know, some people, you know, are destined to be entrepreneurs and other people, maybe not necessarily, they can, they can be an amazing employee within a bit within an organization. Why, why not just go look for another job? Yeah. So I, I guess part of it was experiencing that startup atmosphere at another job that I had had and seeing that it, it could be like, I never thought of having my own business until I worked there. And then I was like, starting to think about all the freedom that I could get out of that. So I like I knew that the job that I wasn't happy at, I didn't want to find another job because um, I, I wanted to, f- because then I have to go through, like I could kind of quietly quit at the job that I didn't like. I'm familiar with, you know, the process and everything. So on every lunch break, every ride home, I was listening to marketing podcasts because as an artist, we know how to create work, but we don't know how to sell that work very well. They don't teach you that. Or at least when I was in school, they didn't teach me that. So I was trying to learn that because I was like, if I quit my job and go somewhere else, then I have to start all over again. I have to prove myself. I have to get familiar with their processes. At least I am in a situation that I can quietly quit or just do my bare minimum, not go overboard anymore, because clearly they didn't appreciate what I was doing to begin with. So I could focus on my own dreams and my own pursuits. So the more that I learned about online marketing, the more I was like, I can figure out a way to like do better with my digital products. And then when courses start, actually Canva approached me when they first began um, at their infancy, um, they asked me if I'd create some templates that they could sell. So I created a bunch of templates and that was generating back then because there were like no designs on there. That was generating my income from my job every month. And then my YouTube, I was getting AdSense money. And then my digital products were selling more because my audience was growing. So like slowly things were starting to move and I was making more money than my job was making, but it wasn't stable. Like with Canva, no one knew that I created those designs. It was just extra cash. I wasn't establishing my brand by any means, but it bought me time to like figure the rest out. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, my designs, like people actually like my artwork. It's selling. I can market it now. How do I do it where I can attach it to my own brand and grow my own brand? One of many reasons that just building an audience is so important. I mean, look at all the opportunities that it created for you. You know, when I'm working with people, it's like, let's build an audience and you know, ultimately that way we have somebody to actually sell your course to once it's available. But side effects, there's amazing side effects to building an audience too. And it's just these incredible opportunities that can come up. Uh, there was a guy I was working with, um, recently, uh, who has an architecture YouTube channel. And because of that, um, the online program at UCLA approached him about teaching online classes, uh, for them just from a 20,000 subscriber YouTube channel. Um, and that wasn't on his radar, but it turns out he absolutely loves doing that. And for you, you had Skillshare approach you, you had Canva approach you to actually pay you to design these things. I'm sure there's been plenty of other examples like that. Uh, but then you, you know, you eventually created your own courses on your own platform. And it sounds like that was the real game changer for you to quit your job and, and know this was successful. Was there a moment you can recall Maybe it was that first launch or second launch or something where you're like, you know, talking to your husband or whatever at the time, like, hey, this this is working. This is legit now. 
Yeah, there was a certain point in time because he wasn't super, we worked at the same place. That's how we met. Um, so he was working at the same design studio as me. So he witnessed everything he knew, like my state of mind and how I felt. And he wasn't entirely happy either. And there came a point where we were like, all right, well, we're covering my income right now. Let's release a couple more courses. Can we get to residual where it almost covers both of our income? And then at what point do we quit? Because we know we'll have enough time where if I can devote more time to creating instead of just nights and weekends, will we be able to replace his income? So we kind of built up an emergency fund. Um, we, When we got married, we paid $250 and got married by a judge. Like we didn't even have a wedding because we used that as our emergency fund money so we could quit our jobs and see if we can make it work before. We we're like, worst case scenario, he can go find a job, but it would be really awesome if we could do this together. So you retired your husband? I, I mean, he, he works for the company. We're partners in the company. He, he does all the behind the scenes web develop. He's a web developer and a designer. So I've got a unicorn for. Well, yeah, props to him because your website is, is incredible. Um, Mm -hmm. let's, let's fast forward to today and talk about what the business looks like today. Um, could you share with us? Because I, I know I can go on there. There's various digital products. Uh, I don't know. Courses are technically a digital product. What do you call the like the 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 templates and things like that on your yeah. website that I can buy? So we so right now at this day and age, I'm teaching Procreate courses, uh, the drawing app on an iPad. I teach how to do illustration and design using your iPad. Um, so those courses. I've got those courses and then I've got digital products for those courses. So like brush sets are are really big and then I still sell fonts. So those are what we're calling digital products. And then we've got courses separately. Okay. So is the majority of the the, the revenue in your business coming from actual course sales at this point? Correct. Yep. Okay. Can you, can you share with us any ballpark numbers, um, whether it's, you know, how many courses you're selling each month or a rough, you know, revenue profit numbers on, on how well, um, course sales are doing for you. And is it, is it, sure. is it fairly, um, is it fair? What's the word I'm looking for? Consistent each month. It's not, it's not. I mean, we're working on that. That's uh, in full transparency. That's something that we're deeply focusing on right now is setting. Are up you on the launch roller coaster, Tila? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I about have, it. Um, yeah. So I have a, a couple of funnels set up, but um, I need to do more. And I'm at a point which was very helpful to listen to some of your past podcast episodes about things that I can do to improve um, the monthly consistency with our income. So we do that launch roller coaster. We, we do two, generally two new courses every year. And then we have our font making course, which we open and close every year, but it's evergreen through deadline funnels. So um, like if you take our free mini course, then you get presented an opportunity to join privately um, outside of the public launch that happens every year. But that's been going for like, six years now. So we're trying to evaluate. um, And it's, it's focused on a different topic than what we've been doing the last like three years. So we're kind of at a crossroads with that course trying to figure out um, what we want to do next with that. So we do the two brand new courses, the brand new courses are generally between 150 and 250 is the one is the price the regular price. But when we launch it, we offer a discount if you join the week that it opens and there's a deeper discount for our our email subscribers. So we've got that. And then we've got our library of courses. All the other courses are just always available, but then we do, um, we do specials throughout the year. So (laughs) I don't know if I answered your question. Um, Well, yeah, I want to, I want to dissect this a little bit because that's one thing we do on these episodes is find people that are successful with courses and just dissect it a little bit and try to try to figure out if we can take away anything in our own businesses from what you're doing that's successful. And so with these new courses, you know, my next question would be, um, is it, are you revamping courses? Like, uh, is it a new version of courses? When you say two courses a year, are you creating brand new courses? Oh yeah. I go all in with the high pressure, high stress situation, (laughs) which is burning me out slowly. So we're, um, yeah, try to figure out how to navigate that, that road. Um, it's been really fun, but it gets very stressful after a while because you have a larger library of courses. You're offering support because we do lifetime access to everything. And I always make myself available to, you know, support people that may have difficulty. I know that that's something that 
helps us to stand out among the other course creators in our niche. So yeah, we do um, two brand new courses on a topic, really, but everything is executed on the iPad using the Procreate app. So that is what we're doing right now. So what was the topic of the last course you launched? The last course was floral patterns in Procreate. Floral patterns in Procreate. Sounds yeah. delightful. How to create se- yeah, seamless repeat patterns. Um, yeah. So we taught everyone how to create those seamless, three different types of seamless repeat patterns with a floral theme because I do a lot of flowers. So ballpark numbers on how that launch did. Yeah. So that, um, the, it, most of, I, this sounds so braggy. Um, most of our course launches, because we only do two a year, uh, we're very fortunate that we've built up our audience over time where, uh, it's, we generally have a six figure launch when we do a new course, when we release a new one. So that one I think did about 120 um, when we launched it in the spring. You're, you're, you're so humble. Like people are so braggy in this niche. Like you, you dang it. I do six figure launches twice a year. It's incredible. And you're like, Oh, you know, I don't want to be too braggy. That's, that's awesome. I love how humble you are about this, but that, that is incredible. So twice a year you're doing six figure launches. Amazing. Um, what are the other 10 months of the year look like? Can I ask that? Sure. So we, um, we have the two launches. We've got the font making course, which is evergreen. And then we have a launch for that, which is generally between 50 and a hundred. And then residual, that one does probably 25 to 50, uh, a year. And then we've got our digital products, which is probably like five to 10 a month, which I'm working on increasing that. And then we've got our YouTube AdSense. Um, and then, you know, like affiliate income that also. Um, that comes in. I want to say like the last two years, we did like half a million on courses per year. So around majority of which is from the launches though. Yes. The launches are the most helpful, but at the same time, like those sound like great numbers, but your mental health takes a beating. The stress is definitely there. There's a lot of pressure. So I am kind of the person that's like, oh, I just need to work harder and I'll just trudge through and we'll be fine, you know. Um, But now I'm realizing that that's not a sustainable way to um, continue (laughs) for the foreseeable future because I love creating courses. I want to keep creating courses, but I know that the burnout is going to is inevitable if I don't start figuring out ways where I can make more consistent income instead of just relying on our big launches. So I, I'm not a launch guy. I'm an evergreen guy, right? And so help me understand what some of those stresses and pressures are of, of your live launches. Yeah, I we haven't nailed down pretty well now because we kind of rinse and repeat our, our launch process. Um, so I feel better. Like that doesn't stress me out as much as like getting the course created because when I decide I create the projects. Um, so all of our courses are project based. I come up with different projects and then I teach how to execute each of these projects and they all relate to the theme of the course, like patterns. I'm going to teach you how to do six patterns and they're going to all be different for different reasons. And then I'm going to throw in some bonuses like mock-ups and use using them in different ways. So, um, I, I plan all that out and then I sit in this recording room and I record for like two weeks straight until I can hardly talk at the end, just getting it all recorded. Because once I'm on a roll with recording and I'm in the right headspace and like I'm picking up where the last video left off, I can talk, I can reference things that I recorded already in another video. So everything makes sense. So when someone's going through the course, it doesn't feel disjointed at all. It feels like we're together through the entire thing. So I make a point of recording everything like marathon recording and then i marathon edit everything and then upload it write all the copy write all the email blasts get all of our pre-launch stuff ready uh notify the email list (laughs) this um with the patterns class for the first time ever we did a a bigger pre-launch usually i would do like some social media posts leading up to the launch and telling people like you'll there's a special gift if you join the email list. It'll be in your inbox the day that the course goes live. But with the pattern class, we 
my husband designed a landing page where if you signed up to be notified, you get access to like three of the course videos right away. And then I had a small email series leading up to it too. So you got some extra uh, fun things leading up to it. So then it, it launches and <laughs> then I, I'm like battling between answering support questions or questions about the course, uh, managing our Facebook community, and then um, creating social media posts and email blasts for the week of the launch if I'm behind at all. So it is, it's pretty intense from like the beginning of me recording. Once I have all the projects figured out, as soon as I start my marathon recording, it is like nonstop until the launch week ends. A lot of people that go with launching a couple times a year are relaunching the same, they're like same flagship course. Yeah. And then we know? do that with the, the font course is the same course. So there's actually three launches a year. Okay, perfect. But I, yeah. I, I've, I'm understanding better the, how stressful, you know, the, the two launches are because right. you, not only are you launching this product, but you're creating the product as well. Yep. And that does sound like a lot for sure. Oh, and I do like a tutorial every single week too. So I'm keeping up with that as well for YouTube. So, Just yeah. in general with your business? Yeah, every Tuesday. I mean, we're called every Tuesday. I send something new out every single Tuesday. So, Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's where I want to go next is with the traffic. That is that is one of the pieces, you know, people typically struggle with the most is, you know, I can create all this stuff, but getting eyeballs in front of it is a problem. And at this point, you've got six figure followers on on YouTube and Instagram. Um, would you mind sharing how big your email list is? Uh, yeah, we got about 70,000 on our email list. 70,000 incredibly healthy email list as well, right? What, what would you say is, you know, your best advice for people to grow audiences on these platforms? I mean, it, it's value and consistency. Like the whole reason we're called every Tuesday is because I had some blogs and business pursuits before um, starting every Tuesday. And I think the reason that they all fizzled was because of my lack of con consistency. Like I would, um, go in with the intent of posting every week, but then life happens and I would skip a week. And then because I gave myself permission to skip a week, then I had permission to skip a week again. And then slowly it just, it would die. So I knew that if something was going to succeed, I needed more than just saying I was going to do something. I needed something to hold myself accountable. So every Tuesday, um, there's not like this giant special story about it. It's just what better way to say that you're going to be consistent than having the day of the week in your name? <laughs> and like, nobody likes Mondays. By the time Wednesday rolls around, people are starting to fizzle out with their week. So it's like, all right, it's Tuesday. Let's do every Tuesday. So that's, um, so that's what it became. And it, it was like notifying everyone when they saw me that like they already knew when to show up to find something new for me. Tila. Have yeah. you have you ever missed have you ever missed a Tuesday? I have not. <laughs> Since 2015, 2014, you've put out new content every Tuesday. I mean, so I used to do a new video every Tuesday and that was super intense. That was like 5 years straight of new videos and that was just super hard especially with once I really started doing these larger courses. It was just so hard. And then I had a, a baby and that made it really hard. Um, so I started doing like, now I'll mix it up where I'll say there's something new every Tuesday. It may not be a video tutorial, but it could be a freebie in your inbox. It could be a tip of the week. You're going to hear from me and you're going to get some sort of value every single Tuesday. Yeah. So walk, walk think, me through that pro process. I mean, you, you mentioned the words when I asked you about this, you said value and consistency and people struggle with that so much, right. especially the consistency piece. You, if anybody knows it, it's you, you literally <laughs> named your brand to help you yeah. be consistent. But that really is the key is putting out something consistently and that's valuable, right? Mm -hmm. So walk me through your process today because you're on all these different platforms, right? And, yeah. and and help me with, you know, what's repurposed, what's not, what's fresh content and so on. Right, so this year we took a, a step back from Instagram because when we looked at all of our stats, because when I, do a video because I'm still doing all of my editing because I'm a control freak and I know I have to get better at this. I aware. Um, <laughs> game changer. So Outsource that. I know. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm just like, no one can edit this the way that I want it done. But now I'm starting to be like, well, I kind of need more time in my life. 
But when I would do, when I would edit, can, can video, I tell you just then, just a little trick yes. real quick? Instead of saying, you know, no one can do this the way that I can do it, instead say, what if someone could do this the way that I want to do it? Yes, Start saying I that, am, and it'll be a yeah, game changer. You're totally right, and I am uh, recognizing this the older our business gets and the more I get burned out. That I like, we have an assistant now, so that was a big thing. Um, but I'm thinking like I need to start paying for an editor, um, and just let it go because, uh, it'll open up the opportunity for me to create more paid content and to help people more. Like that's what I, I, you know, we all join as course creators to help people. And if I'm editing a video, I'm not creating a video to help more people. So I, I'm fully aware and, um, yeah, I can admit this. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I totally understand the control th thing. That was me for a long time. And that's a lot of people I hear from as well. I know we're, we're kind of getting on a tangent. Um, mm -hmm. but like you are clearly very skilled at something that not, not everybody is skilled at. And, and I'll point to Canva reaching out to you to pay you for your work, your templates, your graphic design, right? Mm -hmm. They probably don't reach out to very many people to do that, but how many people can edit video? Right. I would say significantly more, right? And so that's why I right. think this is a this is I'm not just talking to you right now. This is a message for people listening because there's so many people that have that that issue where it's like if you can if you have the funds for it because that's the other part of it is is having the budget for it. But um, most people's issue is the control thing where nobody nobody's going to do for it sure. as well as me. I'm going to spend time giving feedback, things like that. But if you can take that time you're saving and put it into your true gift, then that's how you really make an impact on the world. Yeah, I think I was like, I got so used to hustling to try and make it for so long where I was just like, I just need to work harder. I just need to output more. And I got into that hamster wheel that I got to this point where I needed to transition. Like the whole, like what got you here won't get you there. I am, I'm here right now and I want to get there. And I'm like, I, I know that I've waited longer than I should have. And I need to just take the leap and do it. So yeah. I'm realizing that, especially because like with, um, so with Instagram, I took a step back this year because when we looked at our analytics, we weren't getting like most of our traffic from social comes from YouTube. So I need to focus my attention where it's, you know, giving us traffic. And I, I just wasn't getting it. Like Instagram's great for cute little videos that hold someone's attention, but I wanted to build a community. I want relationships with these people. And as nice as the community is on Instagram, and I, I love the community that I have there, I, I'm not able to build the deeper relationships that I want that I'm able to get with people from YouTube and our, our course community. So what is, so, so I, I kind of brought us onto a tangent, you know, are you repurposing content? Is it like a YouTube video also becomes a blog and a newsletter? How does that work? Correct. So I will decide on what tutorial I'm going to do or what I'm going to teach. And then Usually it's creating something. So then I just do a sped up version of that, like a little teaser video, which I would put on Instagram. Um, and then I would do a blog post with the video embedded and have all the links in there. And then I would write an email blast. So that was every single week I was doing that. And it was just, it was so much work to do by yourself that after a while, I was just like, something's got to give because now I'm not able to create as many courses that I want to create or as in depth as I want to do. And so that process today looks like what? So today I I step back from Instagram quite a bit. So I'm not doing the sped up video because they just were very time consuming. Yeah. Um, and then for the blog posts, we kind of decided we're going to see how a tutorial performs on YouTube. And if it's a well-performing video, then we'll create a blog post about it to capture more SEO for that related video. That way we're not spending time on stuff that's not going to materialize as much. So we're trying to focus our efforts on the things that are doing well. And YouTube's our testing ground for everything. Very interesting. So what what is what are the triggers for you to know, okay, this is this is good enough for us to make a blog post about it? Right. So it'll be um, engagement. It'll be the comments that we get. If I get emails of people asking, because once the email blast goes out, um, if people are saying, oh, could you do this next time? I would love to see this idea, but applied to this. I'll get email instantly 
and then I'll get the comments on YouTube. So obviously there's like a view threshold. It's got to do decent compared to our other 10 videos. You know how YouTube always tells you how it's ranking among your 10 latest videos. So it's got to do better than the fifth ranked one. And then it's got to have engagement. So if I release a video, and even if it's like number five on our list of 10, but I don't get any emails and very few comments, I'll be like, all right, we can focus our efforts elsewhere. But if it's doing well, then I definitely want a blog post to accompany it. That's a that's a really interesting approach because I like the idea of like, you know, a YouTube video each week and let's repurpose that to these other platforms. But you're, what you're saying is, wait, let's let's have a, a one of the platforms be our testing ground and only go through the additional effort if that first exactly. piece of content proved to be impactful, maybe is the right word, and yeah, create engagement. Right. So I really love that strategy. And it's obviously paying off for you. So let's talk about some tools and tech next. You've mentioned a couple so far. You've mentioned Deadline Funnel, Teachable. So mm -hmm. you're using those still today, it sounds like. What what other uh, tech tools are you using that and, and recommend for course creators? So our digital products we sell through Gumroad right now, which we've sold from the very beginning. And they've added a bunch of new tools this year. They've taken a larger cut, unfortunately. But I really like the new tools that they've implemented. Like I, I ran a sale for a new brush set that I released, I want to say last week. Um, and I could say when it's going to expire. So then when people went to purchase it, they saw a countdown, which initiated more sales than what we've gotten before. So that was really awesome that they have that now. They're, and their whole like discount process, they've revised that. So it makes it really easy to do discounts and time discounts and a limited number of people that can have a discount. So I, I'm super happy with that. But <laughs> we are switching over to Shopify. So that is coming hopefully before the end of this year. And then we host our website through WP Engine, but it's a WordPress website. Um, what else? I feel like there was another one I wanted to mention. I can't think of it. Well, you know, if I think of it. And so you, you're, all your courses are hosted on Teachable. I mean, that's the big one, right? Yes. Um, but we do our own sales pages because my husband's a developer. So you'll see our, our course sales pages are very different than what you're probably used to. Yeah. I don't like Teachable sales pages personally. Yeah. Uh, so your sales pages are built on WordPress then. No, um, <laughs> it has been custom codes them all. He's he what? knows JavaScript really well, so he does his magic with um, development. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Uh, so, yep. but the the web, I mean, you mentioned WP Engine, so the, the the majority of the website is WordPress, but your sales pages, he's just he does in yeah, a closet coding can... things from scratch. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I give him the art and all the copy and then he he plugs it all together and then I read through it and give him my edits and he fixes it and then he makes sure everything looks great for everybody. That's amazing. Um, okay, yeah. so Gumroad. Um, yes. I'll be honest, I did not know it was still around. My first online mm -hmm. sale ever was with Gumroad in 2013. Nice. Before I launched my piano course, I put it in into a, a PDF uh, cause that was a lot less friction than I was so scared to be on video and my, I used Gumroad to sell that PDF and I only sold like two, made two sales, but that first sale was amazing. Um, Gumroad made it really easy to just like sell a PDF and get some money. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was still around, but it sounds like it's good to sell your little digital products and stuff, but you're switch, you're moving that from Gumroad to Shopify. Correct. Um, Shopify has better SEO. So that's our big thing. It, it will, like with Gumroad, you only you only pay them when you get paid. So it's very low barrier of entry for everybody that wants to sell digital products. But for us, we're at a point now with our digital products, we want to increase the SEO. Sometimes Gumroad, its uptime is not as, I mean, it's much better than it used to be, but it's still not as great as Shopify. So that's another major reason. So we'll be paying monthly for Shopify and then Send Owl is what we're going to be using to deliver those digital products securely. So that's an additional monthly cost too. But we feel that it's the right decision because we, we can have more beautifully designed pages for our products that are much more optimized um, for SEO. So it, it kind of makes sense for us now. I wouldn't do it if I was just starting, but now that we have a lot of products, uh, I think it's a, a worthwhile risk, I guess. Yeah, 
Are you going to sell courses with Shopify as well? I, I don't have any intentions to do that just because Teachable works so well. And we, we were, we started Teachable back in 2016. And because we were so early to Teachable, uh, we, we got grandfathered into some services that they now require people to pay for so that there's just too many advantages with sticking with Teachable now for us. Understood. Um, all right. So next question, what has, you know, you were, you were a graphic designer back in the day, didn't really like your job. Um, what has having this, this business, this online course business, what has it allowed you to do that maybe you wouldn't uh, be able to do otherwise? It can be general or it can be a specific thing that you and your family were able to do. Yeah. So the biggest one is that my husband and I paid off all of our student loan debt. We paid off our starter home, which allowed us to be in my my dream home, I guess. I always want to live in the country and have some land and a beautiful home. So I, I feel like more peaceful. Like I grew up in the country, so I have this massive sense of peace where I feel like I can be more productive because I'm so much happier just in nature. Um, but the biggest thing of all is because we it led to financial stability for us. We were able to start a family. So that's why we have our daughter now and her name's Tuesday because our business allowed us. Are you serious? That's yeah. incredible. Are you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Everyone always asks like, why'd you name her Tuesday? So that's, that's the reason. That's amazing. That yeah. is absolutely amazing. I'm not sure where to go from there. That's like so, so cool. Um, Okay, so you're you're here now. You've named your daughter Tuesday. You've got your dream house. All things that the business has allowed you guys to do. Absolutely incredible. Uh, we established that you basically started in 2009. You know, maybe a little fuzzy whether it was 2009, 2014. So you've been doing this a while, right? Yep. People are trying to start what you've done today in 2023, right? What would yep. you What would you do if you were starting today? Like, what what was the advice you would give to somebody starting today versus back when you did it? Yeah. So I think um, the thing that gave us the greatest advantage when we first began was like Gary V, jab, 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 right hook or whatever. Um, we we just gave a ton of stuff, a ton of value without ever asking for anything for a really long time. And we built up like that's one of our lead magnets is our resource library. It has, I want to say like 500 uh, free digital products in there. That way, like no matter what your budget is, you can still create beautiful digital art with us. That's our, our main goal of our business is making digital art accessible to anyone who wants to create it. So if you can't afford a brush set, I've got free brushes that you can use. If you are learning Procreate for the first time, I have a free course that you can take it. There's donation tiers if you want to throw me $7 along the way, that's totally fine. Or you can take it for free. That's fine. Um, it's just this deep desire to provide value, no matter what the return is, to not have expectations on that. And, uh, you know, like it'll come, you just have to have faith that it's going to come back to you because there's like, I have to remind myself, like, even if you get negative comments, there's so many more good people in the world. And you have to remind yourself of that because it's really easy to get down. So even though it feels like I give a, a lot away, I, I'm i getting so much back, whether it's financial or not. Like the sense of community I have now that I'm like, oh my gosh, I created this thing that didn't exist before. So anyone creating today, I would just say like, don't, don't focus on making money off of it right away. Focus on providing value and everything's like, it will come back to you if you sincerely uh, want to provide value. Is there a particular place that you recommend providing that value? It sounds like in general, maybe YouTube still at this point. YouTube, as a course creator, YouTube was obviously the best because it, it allowed people to see my my teaching style and having a website gave them the opportunity to build a deeper relationship with me beyond the channel. All right, Tila, this has uh, been a pleasure. Thanks for sharing your story here. Um, if anybody wants to connect with you or see see what you have to offer, why don't you you know give us some calls to action here? Where where can people find you online? Yeah, so our website is every hyphen Tuesday dot com, and then our YouTube channel is just every Tuesday. So YouTube dot com slash every Tuesday. And we can we can add more to your tribe to keep you accountable to keep that every Tuesday uh, name intact. Right? That's incredible. That's great. <laughs> All right, Tila, thank you so much. Thank you.
I didn't want to spoil it in the intro, but how amazing is it that she named her daughter after the business? That's incredible. So uh, Tila and her husband, her family, they're doing really well. They uh, they have a lot to be proud of here, and it was such a pleasure to get to know her and the way she's she's running her business. And uh, congratulations to her and all the success she's had. And thank you again to her for coming on the podcast. And thank you out there for listening to another episode of the Online Course Show. Obviously, without you all out there listening, then this wouldn't be a thing. So I appreciate you very, very much. If you want to find the show notes and any links that we discussed today, you can find those by going to OC dot show slash 212. And if you're interested on getting any guidance or coaching or feedback on your online course business or your future online course business, we have coaching programs no matter where you are on your journey. So if you'd like some additional help or you just want to check out what the options are for that, please head to oc.show slash coaching, oc.show slash coaching coaching. Thank you once again for tuning in once again to another episode here. I am rooting for you and your success, and I'll see you next time. Take care.